Cal time spoilers bring us a new Sorrel for Unleader. It says whenever a permanent opponent controls in the graveyard from battlefield, we put a 1-1 counter on Sorrel. And then on our upkeep, if Sorrel has one or more counters on it, we can choose to remove all of them and exile all the non permanents with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of counters removed. So obviously the ability has a lot of potential, but there are some hiccups. The first is that we can only wipe on our upkeep, and the second is that if we tap out on turn three to play Sorrel, then we will not be able to cast removal until our next turn, at which point the beginning of our upkeep is already passed. So best case scenario, we're looking at a turn five wipe, and that's assuming our opponent has low casting permanence or any permanence at all. So Sorrel feels like a potentially strong card. Hard, but a lot could go wrong, which is why today we're gonna have to test Sorrel out in some gameplay to see if it's good or not. But the first question is, what format should we focus on? Looking first at standard, even though there are a good number of decks with very few permanents, there are also a good number of decks with a lot of permanents. But the issue is that in those decks that are packed full of creatures, there are hardly any creatures that cost one. Most creatures cost three or two, which means for Sorrel's wipe to be relevant, we'll first have to kill two or three of our opponent's permanents. At which point, will our opponent have anything left to wipe? And even though our opponent's stable passage would trigger Sorrel, if Sorrel does see a lot of play in the standard, I think our opponent would be smart enough to know to use stable passage before Sorrel comes out. So those are issues. And those are the exact same issues that we also see in both Pioneer and Historic. Once again, a handful of decks that don't have any permanence, alongside decks that are packed with permanence. And again, very few creatures that cost one. Despite all of this, I think Sarov will see play in these three formats, simply because people are sick of playing the same old cards. But I think if Sarov's gonna see long-term play, then I think Modern is the place to look. Modern has a lot more low-costing permanence, but more importantly, it has fetch lands. Our opponent will probably use up all their fetches by the time Sarov comes out, but as long as Sarov stays alive, then there's a good chance our opponent will draw more fetches. But in addition to fetches, Modern has other kinky lands. Ghost Quarter and Field of Run both work well with Sarov as does Lanoir Reborn. It sees play in Hard Scales Affinity, a deck that daddy birthed into the world, no big deal, hashtag humble. I think it could also work with Sarolf, because when Sarolf comes into play, Lanoir Reborn can put a counter on it, which means on our turn four upkeep, Sarolf's ability will trigger, giving us a chance to play removal before Sarolf wipes right then and there. Now the question is, what deck do we play Sarolf in? And the logical answer is either Jund or Rock. Neither deck is seeing much play at the moment, but both decks pack a lot of removal. Jund has been the superior deck ever since Renin 6 came out, and Sarolf does work well with Bloodbraid, but Renin 6 does get caught up in Sarolf's wipe, and it's just an obnoxious card. That, and because Field Ruin and Lanoir Reborn work better two color deck, which is why today we're running green black Sarl. It's pretty much a typical rock deck. We have discard, we have removal, including Ass Blast, which can also hit our opponent's lands. As for creatures, we have Goyf and Dark Confidant. They could get swept up in Sarl's wipe, but even if they do, I think they're still worth it. And wiping out Dark Confidant when our life gets too low might actually be a good thing. Then we have one Kitchen Finks with Persist. It works very well with Land of our Reborn. Lastly, we have Reanimate, and Graveyard Hate, and Lily. That is the deck, and it's time to see Sarl in action. With Cal Time spoilers underway, be sure to subscribe because there'll be many videos like this coming soon. But without further ado, here's the gameplay, and I hope you enjoy. Opening hand seems doable, so we're gonna keep. Play a tomb tapped. Opponent does the same. Spell bomb, okay. In that case, we'll just go with the Goyf, even though it's just a zero one. Opponent shocks. Opponent plays Ooze. We'll have to kill Ooze next turn because it does hurt our Goyf. Fetch. And now it'll be time for Sorrel. Okay, okay, pass back. Opponent shocks and plays Heliod. Very good with life gain. But unfortunately for our opponent, they be getting the spank. We shall play field. Then spell bomb. Then crack spell bomb. We pull Lily nice. And then abrupt decay. Killing their Ooze. Hooray. Swing for eight. And it'll be back to our opponent. Oh, opponent plays land and passes. Interesting. We pull another Ass Blast. We'll play a land. And the safest thing would be to keep the ass blast at the ready, but we'll swing in. Oh, what is this? They play collected company, hitting champion and ballista, but ballista is gonna die. Although the life game will cause the Heliod to buff it, ballista dying also buffs our Sarl. And because champion has protection from black, we cannot ass blast it. So they soak up five damage here, but now it'll be time for Lily, forcing our opponent to sack a creature, and now Sarl be chonky. But what is this? Another collected company. I guess they figure it's now or never. And no, after all that hard work, there goes the Sarl. Even though we have lethal on the run step, ass blast the apparition, we get a token. And even though they can gain some life, Ass Blast means we win. I'm still pretty bummed out Sorrel. But now it'll be on to the next match. Opening hand seems pretty good. We'll go with Inquisition to buy some time. Oh, and I see dummy thick move here. We let them keep the Croxa. Then we can discard Sorrel and bring it back with Unearth. That pretty good. But we'll take the Scourge and pass it back. Upon a shocks and plays Monastery, tickling us for one. Oh, another fatal push. How about we just play a land and then send it back? Upon it fetches and shocks again. But no Croxa and set another monastery. Oh, bobble. That makes sense. And the bolt. Six damage is a lot here. We could push both or do we just wait and go with the Sarl? I think it's just too risky to let this damage through. Yeah, that's unfortunate. We'll fetch. And then push and push. So it'll be back to us. And now it'll be time for Sarl. Play it. Our opponent cracks a bobble. And now we have Sarl. And if they play Croxa next turn, Sarl will be extra chonky. Oh, and they do play Croxa. We dump land and lose three life. Oh, and fatal push. That hurts. We draw Inquisition. Our opponent has one card in hand. Yes, we'll play it. That is just a land. But at least it's a fetch land. Because now we'll bring back Sarl. Hooray, now back to opponent. Opponent fetches and shocks and brings back Croxa. Wait, I have dummy thick idea. On our upkeep, Sarl's ability triggers, and with his trigger on the stack, we shall feel the ruin. Take out one of our opponent's lands. That buffs our Sarl, and now we can exile Croxa. Hooray! Except we draw a land that's pretty balls, although we can draw. And now the question is, do we swing for three? One has one card in hand. What are the odds of Death Shadow? Because Shadow would be a 2-2 now, but if we attack, it'd be a 5-5. With a card draw here, we might have removal coming up. Oh well, I guess we'll risk it. Swing for three. Our opponent goes eight, and we'll pray no Shadow. Oh, that's unfortunate. All right, we'll draw. We pull Field of Ruin. 
Oh, but an ass blast. Will first take out the land with Fielder Run. And now ass blast. Ooh, and they'd be out of basics. Swing for five. Oh, it's fatal push. And with zero cards in both of our hands, let the top deck and commence. Oh, opponent draws a land, what a loser. Ooh, and that good. Play Lily. And now pass back. Oh, opponent plays another land. Ew, and we draw a land. Up Lily and pass. Oh, when opponent plays Bomat Courier. Its draw card ability is pretty problematic for us. See what we get here. Dark Confidant at nine life. We'll have to risk it. We'll first force in the sack. And then play Confidant. Opponent plays land, draws with it. And they bolt our Confidant. Okay, it's back to us. Oh, and Tarmogoyf, nice. Hawaii it. Up Lily and opponent discards Thought Seize. And once again, it's back to our opponent. <laughs> opponent plays Monastery. And ew, we draw Thought Seize. Oh well, force them to sack. Hit them for five, and it's back to them. Opponent plays Courier, sending Lily to Jesus. Opponent sacks to draw. Oh, but it's a Thought Seize. Sadly for our opponent, there is the game. That was a strange one. Sarov didn't feel that good that game, but it did exile the Croxa. And if that had not happened, we definitely would have lost. So in that sense, Sarov did win us the game, even though it felt a bit meh. But we'll have to see how it does in the next one. Opening hand has a nice curve, so we're gonna keep. Sarov in position. Oh, Uro and path to exile. We can play Goyf next turn, so we don't want path sticking around. We'll take path. Opponent plays land and passes. We shall shock and play Goyf. Now I'll be back to our opponent. Opponent plays land and passes. Oh, and land were reborn. That's some bad timing. Well, fetch. Swing for three. And now play Sarov. Opponent plays Uro. All right. Ooh, and it's Lily. We'll try to play Lily. Will it get countered? No, she does not. Up Lily. And spank for eight. Now it's back to your opponent. Oh, opponent plays Mystic Sanctuary. Putting Path to Exile on top of their deck. And now it's back to us. Land. Meh. It looks like our opponent might be in trouble here. We'll up Lily. Opponent discards the land. Spank for seven and pass back. Opponent shocks. Pass our Sarl. But then opponent passes back. Swing. And there is a game. We got kind of lucky there. They were one turn away from getting Field Online. And Uro. And now it'll be time to reflect. So we did win all of our games. But were those wins due to Sarl? Maybe. But it probably had more to do with us being on the play. But Sarl did perform better than I thought it would. Because even though we only got to wipe once, Sarl was still a looming threat on the battlefield. At the very least, it's like a spell skite and then it soaked up a removal spell because our opponent does not want us to keep Sarl because the longer it stays out, the bigger threat it is. But I think its wipe is so hard to pull off that you can't really build a new archetype around Sarl, at least not in modern. But on the flip side, because its wipe is so rare, I think it's safe to play Sarl alongside other creatures. So if all that is true, we might actually see Sarl across multiple formats. But I think in the long run, modern Rock and Jun decks seem like the best home for Sarl. But will Sarl revolutionize those archetypes? I don't think so. But if a deck already runs one or two tireless trackers, I think Sarl in place of tracker is totally acceptable. Obviously, more gameplay would give us more insight, but for that, we'll have to wait for the release of Cal Time. Because that is all for now. Let me know what you guys thought of Sarl, and as always, I hope you have a great day.